Hi, I'm Shirley Hall, product manager with Renew Air. And today we'll go through the startup of one of our ERV units with commercial control. Before we proceed, we're going to need the startup guide. If you don't have that already, go to www.renewair.com. You'll see this site, go into the ERVs, choose your ERV type, and for each type, you'll see those tabs here. Go to the manuals and the startup guide. We will follow this guide for the rest of the startup procedure. Once you've got the startup guide offline, make sure that all the wiring is there, the power is on, and you've got the doors all closed. Now we need to access the controller. And you can do that in one of three ways. The first way is to access through the display itself on the controller. The second is to use the remote user terminal, which plugs up onto the upper left-hand corner of the controller. And last, you can use the ethernet cable with the PC and plug up onto the right-hand side of the controller and use the embedded web pages. And shown, we have the premium version here with the expansion module. If you have the enhanced version, you don't have the expansion module. There are two sets of menus. The first, the user menus, is accessed by hitting the back button. And you'll see all of the different user menus here. The second is the service menu. That is accessed by hitting the program button and entering the password of 1000. For any given screen, you'll see at the top line, that's the menu in which it resides. Also another navigation tip, if the cursor is up in the left-hand corner, it moves you from screen to screen. If the cursor is inside by hitting the enter, you'll be able to change a setting. The first settings we want to complete are the clock, the unit to measure, and the IP address. So if you hit the back button, we go down to the general settings and we see the clock. If you type refresh yes, it's going to give you the exact clock time of the controller at this time. Then you can change as you need. The unit of measure, the default is the USA Imperial units, but you can change the unit of measure if you need. The IP address, as you can see ours is set for the default. The BMS, but we will handle that later. And then the scheduler. So if you're going to set the scheduler, just make sure if you're going to set the scheduler or the BMS control that you have to know that those then will have to be turned on by the schedule or the BMS in order to get the unit to work. Next, we want to confirm the unit configuration. We do that by going into the service menus, program button, since we're still logged in, otherwise put your password of a thousand in there, and the unit configuration menu is here. You have unit type, that is going to be either enhanced or premium or premium RD. Unit type for enhanced is for units that only have the controller where the premium or premium RD are going to have the expansion module right next to them with more IO and more options. The RD version just lets you do cooling. With all of these other settings, make sure you set those for how your unit was ordered, as well as the variable speed fans for supply fan and exhaust fan. Depending upon all these settings, other screens are going to show up later. Next, we're going to enable any user-supplied sensors. So once again, we need to get into the service menus to do that. Hit the program button, I'm still logged in. Go down to IO configuration, and it's gonna be the second screen. So we have remote sensors, a CO2, VOC, duct static, room static. If you're gonna be using those, make sure though that you set those to yes right here. Also, if you've had heating or cooling enabled, this supply temp center here is going to be required. Then consult your startup manual for wiring those in. 
Now that we've got the hardware set up, we're ready to get into the control settings. From this menu, you hit the back button to get to the user menus and go down to control settings. If you have the enhanced model, the only choice that you have for supply fan control is the constant speed. You'll be able to set a percentage which gets set to the variable speed fan if you have variable speed fan. If you have the premium version, you're able to set quite a few different modes for the supply fan. Supply flow, duct static pressure, room static pressure, CO2 level, VOC level, or CO2 flow. Let's look at a couple of those. So for supply flow, you would set a set point for your CFM to be maintained with a PI loop and you have your P and I values here. For your room static pressure, and you would make sure that you have that pressure transducer enabled, you would have a duct uh, room static pressure set point with the PI, a min command, a max command, and a delay. And another example would be, say, the CO2 flow, where you're going to set a schedule where if the CO2 is 500, you're going to look at the flow of 294, and if it's 1,000 parts per million, you would have a flow of 589. And that's controlled by a PI also. Next, we'll set the exhaust fan setting. So if you have the exhaust, if you have the enhanced, you're able to set it for that same constant speed, but then there's also a second setting that you can have called supply fan command tracking. And what that allows you to do is uh, set it for a percentage of the supply fan. So if you have the supply fan set for 100%, and this is set for 90% of that percentage. So make sure that you're aware of what you're doing. So you're not exactly setting a percentage for the fan, but a percentage based on what the supply fan is doing. You have many other options for the premium. And so you have, say for instance, exhaust flow. So you're able to set a CFM set point and it'll maintain that CFM set point. And then you have the constant speed as we had before, room static pressure. So maybe you're gonna do duct static pressure on the supply fan and room static on the exhaust. Supply fan flow tracking. So this is off the CFM. So instead of command tracking, you're actually gonna say, okay, I'm gonna put this as a specific percentage of the CFM for that supply fan. And so those are your basic settings for your exhaust fan. Now after we have all those settings made, we're ready to start the unit. First things though, make sure that your digital input ID1 has to be closed. So it's probably jumpered, or if you have remote sensors hooked into that, that those are made. And then also, like we said, the BMS, if it's enabled, has to be set that the unit will turn on and the scheduler has to be enabled. If you didn't enable those, then we're ready to proceed. So now we wanna just make sure that you verified that checklist, the fans are going in the right direction and the dampers are functioning. And so we're ready to turn on the unit. So we hit this back button to get to the user menus, go down to unit on off, and we turn the unit on. Now we have the unit on and we should hear the dampers opening and once those dampers are open we'll see the fans go. We go into the unit status menus and the best way that you can see whether or not the fans are running you can say they're enabled so the controller's telling them to turn on but if the dampers aren't open yet they won't. Once they are then this will have see the supply fan on yes and what that tells you is that the current switch is actually reading a signal from that current switch that says the fan is actually running. And likewise for the exhaust fan. It's enabled and exhaust fan on, and then the unit is on. If the unit did not start for some reason, 
it would tell you right here whether or not well, the reason why the unit is not running. You're then able to go through all of these unit status screens to see all of your other control values. Congratulations on your startup. Record your data and save your settings. For more information, consult the controller IOM or go to renewair.com. <laughs>